Welcome back to another video on in-depth topics in game dev. This is a series where we talk about certain subjects that students may find a little bit confusing the first time around or haven't quite uh, found the right explanation for. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about time-based versus frame-based movement, which is how you ensure that the animation that's happening in your game happens at a consistent speed even if you start to experience lag. As always, these videos will be coded in Python, but this is a totally language independent topic and whatever whatever language you're coding in or whatever game framework you're using, this, uh, this lesson will apply just as well. So in this video I want to talk a little bit about timing, especially how it relates to movement. So I've made a little program here where we have a sprite and this sprite's going to spawn on the left hand edge of the screen. And now I want to make this sprite move. And I want this sprite to just move to the right across the screen. And I want it to take exactly five seconds to make that trip. So how would I do that? Well, if we look at a quick calculation here, the screen is 600 pixels wide, and I want the sprite to take 5 seconds. So that means I want it to move 120 pixels every second. But we don't just move 120 pixels, wait a second, and then move 100, another 120, right? We're moving, we want a smooth animation. So we want to move every frame. And if we're running at 60 frames per second, and we want to move 120 pixels every second, that means we're going to move 2 pixels every frame. And if we move at exactly that speed, it will take five seconds to cross the screen. So that's easy enough to do. We will give our sprite a velocity of two, and we will just update it by moving uh, the x by that velocity. And that will make our sprite move. So now our sprite is moving and it's taking five seconds to cross the screen. And that's great, although real quick, I think for the purposes of our testing, I'm going to go ahead and make it wrap around the screen so that we can see it keep going. So if the rectangle is right, actually let's let it move all the way off. We'll say if the left is greater than width, then right equals zero. Okay, so, so we have our sprite moving and it's moving at the speed we want because it's moving a certain amount every frame. But the problem is, what happens if our frame rate changes? Imagine we have a really busy game with lots of sprites on the screen, lots of activity going on, and we start to get some lag. In fact, let's imagine we got a lot of lag, and our, frames, our frame rate dropped to 30 frames per second. So that means we're still going to be moving 2 pixels every frame, but we're only moving 30 times per second and not 60. And now all of a sudden our speed is half of what it was. We're taking 10 seconds to cross the screen. So if this was a bullet or it was a, a you know a rocket flying across the screen, now suddenly it's traveling slower and it's taking longer to travel the same distance. And this is not very good. Um, we want our objects in the world to travel at the speed we want and not be tied to the frame rate. We want them to be independent of the frame rate. And we can accomplish this by looking at how long the frame is taking. Now most game frameworks provide you some way of finding this out. In the case of Pygame, when we do our FPS, uh, when we tick the clock um, to keep our timing of our loop to the FPS we wanted, um, it returns us back a value. And that value, which we're going to call DT or Delta T, which is what most game frameworks will call it, is how much time the previous frame took. Right? If we're running at 60 frames per second, that will be 1 60th. But if we start to get lag, this number will change. And in Pygame, this number is given to you in milliseconds. So I'm going to go ahead and just divide by 1,000 so that uh, we have it in seconds instead. So now we have a 
delta time for how long the previous frame took. And if we look back at our calculation that we did a minute ago, we know that we wanted to travel at 120 pixels per second. That's the speed we actually want our sprite to move at. And notice this has nothing to do with frame. It's just how many pixels to travel in one real second of time. So that's what we want to set our speed to. So when we update our sprite, we're going to pass it the dt from the game. So it receives the, d, the delta time. Okay, and delta just stands for change. If you haven't heard that uh, term before, um, delta is the Greek symbol that looks like a little triangle. Um, and it stands for the change. So this is the change in time since the last frame. So we're going to change our vx here, and we're going to make our vx be 120. Right, since that's what we want our speed to be. And then we're going to move at 120 times whatever the change in time was. So again, if this was, if we're right now, if we're going at, a, at 60 frames per second, then we're going to see the same calculation. We're going to take that 120 and it's going to be multiplied, or I mean, sorry, divided by, or multiplied by 1 60th, right? It's going to be multiplied by 1 60th and get us 2. So if we're running at 60 frames per second, we'll still be moving 2 pixels every frame. But as soon as this number changes, then the number of pixels per frame is going to change. And we won't have to recalculate it. The computer is going to do it for us. So right now, if we set this back to 60, you'll see that we're taking 5 seconds to cross the screen. Right, same as we were before. But now, if we start experiencing lag and we drop to 30 frames per second, our sprite still takes 5 seconds to cross the screen. And in fact, if something really horrible happened and we dropped to 10 frames per second, still we're going to take 5 seconds to cross. Now, obviously, the animation isn't as smooth anymore, but that's okay. If you're running at 10 frames, 10 frames per second, this is what's going to happen. But at least our sprite isn't now taking, what, 6 times 5 is 30 seconds to cross the screen, right? Which would be a ridiculously slow bullet if this was a bullet. So now we've made our movement of our sprite independent of the frame rate. So that's all there is to time-based versus frame-based movement. You just keep track of how long it's been since the last frame happened. And again, most game frameworks in one way or another will give you that amount of time. And you use that to figure out how many pixels you should move for that particular frame. And then everything will stay consistent. You just set your speeds in pixels per second and everything will remain consistent. So I hope this video was helpful and that if you were struggling to understand uh, time-based versus frame-based movement, uh, sometimes the documentation out there can be a little hard to get the first time through, um, but you should, in most cases, you want to use this uh, in your games that you're making. If you like this video, please press the like button below to help others find it. And if you haven't already, think about going over to our Patreon page and contributing a few dollars a month. That would really help uh, in producing the videos and keeping this channel going. Um, the videos will always be free and it's not required, but it would of course be greatly appreciated. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.